We are back with the 22 arc gas gun. Today we are going to be shooting at about 100 yards. We are going to be using one bullet and a bunch of different powders. So for those of you that are interested in the equipment and or the load data that we are using in this video, I will post all those details in the description below the video. So these are all going to be three shot groups and we're going to be using the Hornady 62 grain ELD VT bullet. We're going to be using Benchmark, H335, Exterminator, 2230, TAC, H4895, 2520, Varget, CFE223, and Lever Evolution. I'm just kind of going wild with it because um, I was really curious to see what different powders would do with this bullet because I was really interested in using this bullet in this cartridge predominantly. The rest of them didn't really interest me nearly as much as just this particular projectile, especially because it's a newer projectile, but it's kind of what the cartridge was designed for, so or designed to use in tangent with, so that's what I wanted to use it for. So we're gonna be doing, um, I'm using Hornady Brass, this is all hand loads obviously, but it's Hornady Brass, CCI 450 primers. They're seated to about 2.250 overall length and I'm not going to name off all the increments of the powder charges because you guys are probably already leaving the video because I'm talking too long. So I'm going to get started with 25.5 grains of benchmark and then we're going to work, I believe, if I did this correctly, from the fastest burning powder all the way up to the slowest. And I forgot my brass catcher, so we are probably going to lose a buttload of brass here because uh, I'm not going to take a, whole time, a lot of time to look for it. Um, it's getting dark really quick, so... I'm gonna run out of time to shoot these videos. But anyway, we're gonna get started with the benchmark made by Hodgson. And we're gonna start on the top left diamond. Actually, we're gonna start in the center diamond because I'm not entirely sure where the point of impact is gonna be with these. So we're gonna go center of the target and then we'll move out from there. 2806. 2826. 2865. Oh my gosh, it's ripping the hair out of my beard. The recoil impulse on that was freaking awesome. <laughs> These loads are pretty light, I can tell. It's uh, There's like almost no recoil in this gun, it's hilarious. But uh, average velocity was 2832, extreme spread was 59, and our standard deviation was 24, or 25. So that, that kind of sucked. Next is gonna be 27.0 grains of Hodgdon H335. We're going for the top left diamond. 28. Okay, so I just had something really weird happen and I think it was my fault. Um, I can't really explain what I just felt, but I have a feeling that the round actually chambered right before I pulled the trigger, like finished chambering. I think I have these loaded too light to where um, the bolt didn't actually get back all the way and it kind of got caught on the round a little bit. Anyway, long story short, that felt really weird. I forgot to say velocities completely. I am so sorry, guys. I'm, uh, I'm trying to rush through this and I'm not doing a very good job. So, holy crap. Our, our average velocity was 29.73, extreme spread of 137 and our standard deviation was 60. That is nuts. So um, we, are, we are doing terrible so far. I don't even know what to say about that. That was so bad. The next powder we're gonna be testing is 27 grains of Ramshot Exterminator. And uh, I have zero hope that things are about to get better. <laughs> it's just, like, oh my gosh. So I intentionally loaded these things conservatively, but I think I loaded them way too conservatively. I think I underestimated um, what they really legitimately consider max charge on these things. So anyway, we're gonna be going for the top center diamond here with the Ramshot Exterminator. 3042. 28.82. 2897. Wow. Average velocity was 2940, extreme spread of 159, and a standard deviation of 72. I don't have anything good to say about this. This is horrible. The group suck. The velocity spread sucks. I don't know why I was so worried about picking up brass. It ain't throwing them that far. 
because clearly I didn't put enough powder in these things. Um, the primers all look super rounded, like there's no indications of pressure yet, but that's in this gun, so take that with a grain of salt. Next up we have 27 and a half grains of accurate 2230. Okay, we are going for the top right diamond. I moved the point of impact, so it should be closer to where we're aiming now. Twenty-nine forty. Twenty-nine fifty. Twenty-nine sixty-five. That was actually not a bad spread on the velocity, but the accuracy still sucked. Average muzzle velocity was 29.52, extreme spread of 25, and standard deviation of 10.3. Huh. It's actually something good. That's weird. Okay, you gotta be in there somewhere. Where are you at? Okay, next we have 26.5 grains of ramshot tack. We're going for the left side of the center diamond here. 29.26. 29.55 and 29.50. So our spreads definitely closed down compared to those first few powders that we tried. Oop, don't do that. Average muzzle velocity was 29.43, extreme spread of 29 and a standard deviation of 12 and a half. That's still not bad. That's actually pretty good with a gas gun, especially one that I put together. Golly, I'm just lucky it hasn't blown up yet. Okay, where'd the brass go? Okay, next is going to be 26 grains of H4895. We're going to be shooting for the, the right side of the center diamond. 2792. 2815. 2795. So we might be starting to get somewhere productive here. Average muzzle velocity 2800, extreme spread of 24, and a standard deviation of 10 and a half, 10 and a half again, or 11. Um, now we're starting to see progress. That's good. I'm wondering if maybe the slower powders are just more desirable in this gun, but we're about to find out whether or not that's just a bogus theory or if it's just like that one powder, because that definitely shot better than anything else by far up to this point. Next up is 29 grains of Accurate 2520. I'm gonna be going for the bottom left diamond on the target here. 2932. 29.66. 29.59. Average muzzle velocity of 29.52, extreme spread of 34, and a standard deviation of 15. So definitely not as good as the last one. Next up, we got 27 grains of Varget. And we're gonna be shooting at the bottom of the center diamond. 2795 2792 The average muzzle velocity was 2791, the extreme spread was 11, and the standard deviation was 4.6. So the velocity was actually really consistent. The group size wasn't great, but it's definitely a lot better than where we started today. Um, the slower powders are definitely looking better as far as accuracy is concerned and consistency and velocity but it's still not phenomenal but it's we're, we're doing better so that's a plus but we're going to go ahead and move on to the next one here okay going for the bottom right diamond here 30 50 30 29 3001 we were doing pretty good until that last shot our velocity consistency kind of went in the toilet. Average velocity of 30, 27, extreme spread of 49, and a standard deviation of 20. Kind of interesting, but uh, velocity just got slower on each shot, so 
don't really know what that means, but it is what it is. All right, last group of the day is going to be 30 grains of lever evolution. I'm going to be aiming between the center target and the bottom right target here. Thirty thirty two. Thirty sixty five. And twenty nine ninety three. Average muzzle velocity was thirty thirty, ironically. Extreme spread seventy one feet per second and a standard deviation of twenty nine feet per second. So not exactly a great outcome with today's test. Now Something to keep in mind, we are using fired brass from factory ammo from different lots. And like we had 75 grain ELD, Hornady Black, we had the 88 grain match, and we had the 62 grain ELDVTs uh, ammo that we tested in this gun and we are reusing that brass. All of them were running different pressures. Um, the 75 grain was the hottest and I did not sort them out per lot before I mixed it all together, cleaned it and turned it into reloaded ammo. So that being said, I didn't start with fresh brass. I did not start with brass that was all in the same condition, but I just want you guys to know that that may be what caused some of the inconsistencies, but I still have yet to be able to get new brass for this cartridge. And the only brass out there that you can get if you work hard to find it or pay a lot of money for it is Hornady. So um, I'm not necessarily a huge Hornady brass fan, just personally, um, but it's what we got. And I wanted to share this information with you guys so we're, we're using what we have. But anyway, that's gonna conclude today's test. Thank you guys for watching. As always, please do me a favor. Um, vote in the polls that I put out, comment in the description, let me know what you guys are wanting to see going forward, what you're interested in, what you're not interested in. Just help me to decide what kind of videos to make in the future, and it will probably happen. So thank you again. Y'all stay risen, take care, be safe, and we will see you in the next video.